Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be working on one design with four different pieces of medium. Or should I say one design with four different mediums. I created this painting on a 4x4 canvas. It's a class I teach in my studio and I am going to use the tracer that I created for that painting and create four on some watercolor paper. I'm going to flip this off real quick. So I have my light box and I have four pieces of 4x4 four four watercolor paper and I'm just going to trace them with a pencil. Let's turn that light back on. And so I'm going to trace each one of them onto each one of these pieces with this design on it. And I'm going to do it with four different mediums. I'm going to do acrylic wash, watercolor, acrylic paint, or acrylic markers, and mixed media. So there's going to be four different ones, and I'm going to take you along. So right now I'm just going to trace this. So I'll put this on time lapse and start tracing all four. All right, I have all four traced, and if you notice, I didn't do them exactly perfect along with the tracer. I wanted them to have some characters, so they're all gonna look a little, slightly bit different. But like I said, I'm gonna do watercolor, acrylic paint marker, gouache, and mixed media. So, let's get started. For this first one, I'm gonna use a collection of Posca pens. I don't know which exactly colors I will use, but we're going to start working with the Posca pens and see how they do. Um, what type of, you know, look we're going to get by using the Posca pens. I'm going to see how my light is. Actually, I think that, mm, there's still too much shadow. Okay. So there we go. We'll just turn the light off that way. And so, it's fairly you know it's you can see it so what I'm gonna do since our painting looks like this I'm going to use this it's called I think it may be a little too nope that's too emerald green that won't work for my jar I may not actually be able to do these colors because I don't have those colors um, to use for this so how about we do a jar that doesn't look like this mason jar so maybe I will paint it pink and we'll do the background 
with um, this emerald green, as it's called. So what I like to do when I'm painting one of these paintings is I always start with the background and work up. So I start with the farthest detail back. And so I'm really painting the negative space around the jar. And I like to turn my piece. It's just easier for me if I turn it than if I'm trying to draw all the different ways. I seem not to be able to, not to have to end up getting my hands in the paint. So now, with the Posca pens, I like to work as, you know, in the same direction. So I'm just going to do all of them going up, I'm not going all the way to the end of the page or end of the piece. I'm just going to go halfway up. This way I can get a smooth, even coverage on this without too much. Issue. There we go. And then I'm just going to follow the line of that negative space so it doesn't. So once this dries, you're going to see a, you might have a little bit of streaking, but not much. And you can go back over it. And this is just some cold press watercolor paper. I think it's Hobby Lobby brand because I accidentally ripped the cover off, but it's just a pad of watercolor paper. So just use what you got on hand, and now I'm going to start making it go straight up and down again. One thing about the Posca pens, you can, they stay wet long enough that you know where you've hit. And once it dries, you can see if you need to go over any areas um, again. Like that, and then maybe some background spots. And while that side's drying, I'm gonna go over here and do this side. So for this, for the bottom, I'm going, or the table that it's sitting on, I'm going to use dark brown, Posca, and I, instead of going up and down, because this is, I'm going to go this way, I'm still going to go and do my outline around the negative space of the jar, and then I'm going to do take my pen this way. take long to dry and I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the lid just to go ahead and do it using black I don't have a fine tip so I hope this you know will work out without too much making it too big there we go 
One thing about going ahead and doing the black, I can put the details, it'll be good and dry by the time it's time for me to do the details. You can go ahead and do the heart if you've got enough. Since I'm going to do the jar as this bright pink, I have a fine tip. I can go around it. Um, so I'm going to do. Okay, my black is dry enough on that edge that I can go ahead and do the jar. So we're going to do the negative space around the hearts again. Go around the hearts. Makes it easier to go on the outline of the hearts. And outline them a little bit. Because this one is lighter, I may have to go over just a bit. Um, or either go over the outline with the darker colors. So you won't see the pencil line. And now I'm just going to outline the jar. And go over the edge just a hair, just a hair bit, <laughs> to um, pull my southern slang out right there. Just so that you know you can see the out, see what's behind it a little bit. That sort of helps foe that transparency of that pink jar. And so now we're going to go ahead and fill in our jar. Just completely color it in. I'll come back to you when it's when I'm finished with the filling it in. Now we're going to let this pink one dry, and I realized I need to go over the edge just a little bit more with that brown on the bottom. And while the pink is drying, I'm going to use my fine tip white to add the detail to the top of the jar lid. Makes it so quick and easy to add the detail. Here we go. And this top part's up here is dry, so I'm going to add the shadow. And a little, or not shadow, the reflection. So there we go, we got the reflection. And now, let's get started adding the hearts. And so I have orange, red, fuchsia, blue. So we have not we need nine colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I only have eight. So we will probably use this emerald green on one of the hearts. Because if you notice I did the pink on the heart on one of the hearts on the canvas painting. So, 
Now all you're going to do is you're going to just color in the hearts. And from start to finish, this painting has been under 15 minutes with the Posca pens. been really easy, really fun. I'm not filling in the hearts all the way. I'm leaving some of it open just to give a little highlight. doesn't show up as well against the pink. It doesn't contrast as much, so I may actually go over it with a, I may line it after it dries. There you have it, 15 minutes, 20 seconds, and you have a fun little piece. And you can actually use this as a card um, you can do it on a card. I'm on dark. There we go. Cut that light off a little bit so you can see the difference. But yeah, paint it on a card. Have some fun. There it is. So now we have the acrylic and the Posca acrylic. So, in the next video, I will do it with do this painting again. I was going to do them all as one painting, but they are taking a little bit longer. So in the next video, I will post about how I painted it with acrylic gouache. And if you would like this painting tracer and the full instructions on how to paint this one, trace it, do everything, um, is available in my Patreon um, for the $5 a month. Um, subscription and there is a link in the description box below for my patreon if you're interested in joining there will be there's all kinds of things there's printables um, digital downloads for other things as well as the pieces that you need to create a painting every month and the step-by-step -step instructions so I hope you enjoyed this and um, let me know if you make something from it